here and I'm going to put together a guide to give you some assistance in how you should answer the data question for paper two. So what I've done is I've converted the published paper from June 2014 from a PDF into a doc file and I'll include a link for this file below in the video information. So hopefully this strategy that you will learn today will help you answer the questions in the, the data side of this a little bit better. So what I would suggest you do is you're going to have section A and section B, and this is going to cover section A. I've done some section B essays. I'm going to read through the specific data question data and then kind of just stop where I think there is a reason to highlight some information. So I'd encourage you to do this same kind of thing. Look for the key terms and the kind of questions that would come up, and then this should help you as you proceed. Okay, with developed economies heavily in debt, the ability of the BRICS to drive the global economic engine is increasingly in doubt. All right, so the first thing we have to answer is uh, why, why is there doubt about the ability of the BRICS to drive economic growth? China's growth has slowed to its lowest rate in three years. Brazil's growth has decreased, and Russia is heavily dependent on oil and energy prices, which are falling. India's growth has slowed, but is still high by the standards of developed countries, though well below the levels required to maintain economic momentum and improve the living standards of citizens. So we, we may need to examine why their growth rates have slowed, slowed down. But it seems to be there is... There's particular attention drawn to India. So there's some key facts there. We saw oil prices falling, hurting Russia. And then we also see India's growth slowing, but still relatively high in comparison to developed countries. Okay, there are still positives in the Indian story. There is a youthful population, a large domestic demand, and high savings. Sorry. So we want to know what will the impact be of a large of large domestic demand, a youthful population, and high savings. But India's economic difficulties, including its weak international position and inadequate infrastructure, threaten to overwhelm the country's potential. All right, again, this is something else. This is a analysis factor. Why does a weak international position and adequate infrastructure impact, uh, let's see, competitiveness or potential. So you want to think about these as you, as you go, because when they make a statement, you don't want to just accept it and say, okay, that, that, that's it. Right? There's obviously a reason why they're telling you this. In critical sectors, such as power, transport, and utilities, more investment is needed. And although its workforce is young and growing, there is a shortage of skills. Oh, okay, so there's another one there. What is the impact of shortage of skills? The country is running a current deficit of more than 3% of GDP. The cause is slowing exports as a result of weakness in India's trading partners and higher imports, mainly purchases of commodities and oil. So here we see that India's export partners are suffering economic slowdowns but Indians are importing significant uh, amounts of commodities and oil. Right? We want to know why would they uh, why would they lean so heavily on commodities and oil? So in addition, India has a weak external position. It has around two hundred seventy billion dollars in currency reserves, but foreign debts must be repaid in the current year are about 40 to 50 percent of this amount. So it has currency reserves, but they have foreign debts. What will the impact be of foreign debts? Why are 270 in currency reserves relevant? All right, selected economic indicators for India. So we have GDP percent change, inflation index, Current account balance and exchange rate. Right? This is a lot of the stuff from macroeconomics that they expect you to know. 
and the source is from the World Bank. So every time you get a table, they're going to ask you to do some kind of calculation. So that's my analysis of the data question, the way you need to read it. And I just wanted to share this with you so you can see what you, when you're reading the kind of things you need to look out for. Now, I wouldn't necessarily suggest you do this when you do the exam, because obviously I'm taking time to do this to show you how I think and how the question's structured. But I would encourage you to look first at the questions, then come back and have that analytical mind ready to look at the article. I'm continuing the video lesson on the 9708 AS Economics CIE Paper 2 data question. And I'm taking a look at the questions here, and I wanted just to highlight in red the key terms you need to look out for. And now I'm only going to bullet point what you need to do. And if you want to see my handwritten answers, because I think it's better if I, I show you how I handwrite it and how it looks on the page so you can get an idea of expected length and what kind of things to look out for. I'm just going to fill in here the things you need to do because a lot of my students end up asking me how much is enough to write for one, three, four, five, six marks and potentially eight mark questions. So here I only have the opportunity to look at uh, one, four, and six. But generally, if you're close to a four mark question, you'll have an idea of what you need to write, what you need to do. And let me just you know get to it and explain to you what's necessary. All right, for this one, what you're going to need is you need to refer back to the data and calculate inflation. Right, so we're going to look at 2001 to 2011. And I'm not going to exactly show you how to do that, but we have a base year. 2011 is, one, is a, uh, sorry, 2001, base year of 100. And we know 2011 is 191.5. So it's probably going to be 91.5% inflation. Right? But I'm going to show you the answers when I put it together. Here, I just want to tell you what you need to do. So we're going to do the same thing for this one, but here it's a little bit tricky, right? They're, what they're doing is they're setting you up. So the first one is easy because you have a base year of 100. The second one's a little bit tricky because you're looking at 2011, which is this number, and then 2013. So they're really trying to assess your ability to calculate the rate of inflation. Then dropping down, with the use of a production possibility curve, explain the opportunity cost of India of choosing. Okay, so here I'll tell you what you need to do. This one's simple. You need to draw a PPC labeled on the Y with, or Y or X with transport facilities. Uh, label the X axis education services, lowercase dad, education services. And the next thing you want to do from that is pretty much just move from one point towards another and explain clearly what is going on. And you'll obviously, you're going to see that in the handwritten answer that you guys can access from the, the video info down below. So explain how the, prov the provision of improved transport facilities and education services might develop the product productive potential of the economy in India. So this is a gimme, right? They've given you two points and they're giving you four marks for this. So the two points we want to talk about are improved. Don't want that color. Black. We want improved transport facilities. And then you need to explain in one to two sentences how that may develop the productive potential. All right, the second thing is education services. And then the same thing. I'm just going to literally cut and paste here. Explain in one or two sentences how that may develop the productive potential. Right? This is going to get you two marks here, two marks here. You got your four. Now we're at part D. So D is asking us, India's exchange rate depreciated with reference to the data. Explain using supply and demand analysis what might have contributed to the change in India's exchange rate. So this one is clearly a diagram of the foreign exchange market. And we will need to analyze a factor, supply of rupees or demand of rupees. And also explain in two sentences the change. Two sentences. And I'll show you those two sentences when you download the, the handwritten answer. 
All right, and this one is usually the toughest one. Everyone has a headache. They get to the six more question. They say, right, now what do I do? Right, I'm here with this discuss question. I've got a discuss question. And I need to figure out how much do I write. Well, you got six marks. So generally, you're looking at that line paper. If you're going over a page, you're doing a bit too much. But let me give you some idea of the kind of things you need to write. Because you can get it done in probably, I think, half a page is okay, or three quarters of a page. So here's what you should do. Let me jump drop down here and put in a bullet point. All right. And let me pop this onto the next page. All right. And um, here. Okay. Given the changes in the exchange rate, let's talk about this. Discuss whether. So what I should do is first take a look at 2010 and 2013 and explain what has happened to the exchange rate. Right, you need to explain that because it's just saying given the changes. So you need to say either the currency has appreciated or depreciated. Uh, sorry, that's just a brief phrase, but I think you understand the point. And then from there, we have six marks left, right? So we need to evaluate possible causes of this and the relationship to economic theory. Economic theory is just going to say depreciations, appreciation, changes in the current account balance. Do we see what we expect to see happen when we have these currency fluctuations? All right, so that's it for me. I'm going to combine this together for you guys. You'll see uh, the videos, part one, part two, about first analyzing the article. The second part is this, what I've just given you. And then to download my handwritten answers that are modeled to be to earn full marks, click on the click in the video information below and I should be able to send it to you. Thank you. Happy studying.